Hello everybody, this is Mr. Burke, and I'm going to be doing an overview of the additional higher level IB biology topic 11.2, movement. The essential idea here is that the roles of the musculoskeletal system are movement, support, and protection. The understandings can be found on this slide, the applications and skills can be found on this slide. Note that there's some important guidance here that you should be reading to get a better understanding of what exactly you're supposed to know for each of these statements. This statement reads, bones and exoskeletons provide anchorage for muscles and act as levers. Notice that it's not just talking about bones and the human skeleton, but it's also talking about exoskeletons, which are not in humans, right? These are typically found in insects and some crustaceans. Then note that it's also talking about how these bones or exoskeletons provide the anchorage for muscles and act as levers. So the reason why they mention exoskeleton is because they do want you to know about these antagonistic pairs of muscles in an insect leg. So if you recall back from inspiration and expiration, there are these antagonistic pairs of muscles that work together in conjunction with one another. They are opposite, they perform opposite range of motion and opposite actions to help us move. And in this case, it's helping the insect move. So you can see on this bottom part of this diagram, there's an extensor muscle that is connected over and on the outside of the tibia of the leg of the grasshopper. And that's going to be pulling on the tibia to, to open it up, right? And then you've got as the extensor is relaxing in this top part of the diagram, right, the flexor is what's contracting, and that's connected to sort of the inside of the tibia, so it's going to pull the tibia in and move it, move it down, okay? And we have antagonistic pairs of muscles as well throughout our bodies to help us move, and they are not anchored to our exoskeletons, because we don't have exoskeletons, but they are anchored to our bones. So we're going to look at an example of that with the elbow. That's the joint that the IB would like you to focus on. So as the state reads, movement of the body requires muscles to work in antagonistic pairs. So again, we're going to focus on our arms and specifically our elbow joint for humans. So the antagonistic pair of muscles that we use our triceps and our biceps in order to use that elbow joint to move our arm this way or this way, right? And so you can see that there are triceps out on the back side of our arm, right back here, and then there are the biceps on this side of the arm, right here. They That is the antagonistic pair of muscles that helps the joint over here in the elbow to function. Okay, so the elbow is known as a hinge joint, and so when you hear hinge joint, you could be thinking of like a door hinge, for example, where the door is only going to move in two directions, right? It's going to move out and then back in, and it just moves in those two directions. Same with your elbow joint, that is a hinge joint. What you need to do for the IB is be able to annotate and label a diagram of the elbow and the muscles that are involved, the antagonistic pair of muscles, the ligaments and tendons that are involved, and also the parts of the joint that are involved, as well as the bones that are there. So I think the best practice for this is going to be to do a drawing and then to label and annotate that drawing.
if we start right here, you would have the humerus. This is your upper arm bone, so right here, right? And then you could draw the forearm bones, which would be over here. And this is going to be the inside of the elbow. I'm going to draw that right here, which is the radius. That's going to be a thinner bone, sort of on the inside of your arm, your forearm, and then the ulna, which is larger, that's going to be out here. Okay. Now we're going to draw the parts that correspond with the humerus and the radius and the ulna. So there is a cap on the end of your bones where they meet. Drawing that here in this light blue color, that's the cartilage. Okay, you've also got your joint over here, your joint capsule. Joint capsule I've drawn in purple. And then you've got your synovial fluid, which would be inside of the joint capsule. So that is a fluid. Right there. Okay, now what do all of these things do? Well, you've got your humerus, you've got your radius, you've got your ulna, okay, humerus, radius, ulna are all in, involved with anchoring the muscles right? So then we do want to start to talk about the muscles in a second. And they're anchor points for the muscles so that you can then move the bones as well, right? Okay, let's quickly talk about the cartilage right here. What is that going to allow for? It allows for a smooth surface that reduces friction. Why do we need to reduce friction right here where the bones meet? It's so that the bones are not grinding against each other, which could be painful and also would not allow for smooth movement. We want smooth movement. And so that's what all these parts of the joint are involved with, is allowing these bones to easily glide past each other. And so the joint capsule also allows for the smooth movement, but its main function is really to contain that synovial fluid. Synovial fluid allows for greater shock absorption because it is a fluid. Okay, and it aids in that smooth movement of the muscles. Now we're going to go ahead and draw the muscles. Back here on the underside of the arm, we said we have the triceps. Okay, on the upper inner side of the muscle, you have the biceps. 
Okay. Okay. So the biceps are actually involved. They are the flexor muscles. Flexor muscles. Okay, then you've got the extensor muscles, which are the triceps. Okay, extensor muscles. And then how are they actually connected to these bones? So your bicep is going to be connected to your radius around this area and this is called a tendon. You've got tendons on either side of the muscles that anchor in to the bones. Remember in insects they're anchoring to the exoskeleton but in this case they're anchoring to the bones and this tricep actually anchors over to the ulna. Okay because it's allowing the, the arm to move and open that way, extending, extensor muscle, right? And then the bicep is active when you do this, and it's flexing, right? And do you see, if you could imagine that the bicep is going to be pulling on this tendon, which is connected to the radius, and bringing the arm upwards, versus the tricep, which is going to be pulling on the ulna and bringing the forearm back out and downwards, extending. So let's go ahead and also label these as being tendons. You can remember this in a couple ways. So one way is you can remember muscles are tender and soft, maybe. So that's why tendons are going to be connecting muscle to bone or bone to muscle. And then you can remember bottom from BTM, bone to muscle, bottom. Okay, now we've got these other things involved here, which are ligaments. Ligaments connect bone to bone. So I'm showing that with the yellow here. Ligaments, how can you remember that? You can remember bone to So it's connecting bone to ligament to bone. And that's going to, you can remember blob. Okay, so if you remember bottom and blob, you should be able to sort out what tendons are versus what ligaments are. If we were to annotate all of these parts that I had just drawn out, you would see this. So you can just describe their function, right, in the annotation. Okay. And remember that those bones do act as levers and for muscle anchorage to allow for movement. Okay, the IB also wants you to know about these synovial joints. That's what we call the joints that you know about between the bones, they're synovial joints. Some of them allow for some movement, while other joints allow for other movement. The ones that I would focus on would just be the hinge joints, which could be, your example could be right here at your elbow, or ball and socket joints, right? So the ball and socket joints would be, as an example, could be right here where your upper arm meets your shoulder. Also down here at your pelvis. Okay, the knee is known as a pivotal hinge joint. So it's like a kind of a mix between 
um, hinge and also allows some other movement there. The hip was an example of a ball and socket joint. That allows a great range of motion, like full 360 kind of an effect. Okay, that's all that we have for part one. I will see you on part two next.